Yeah, so today we're finishing up the series on metadharma. Um, in the first week, if you remember, we um, started by exploring uh, social noting practice and just kind of framing the larger container of metadharma as any dharma practice that attempts to respond to the meta crisis that we're in, the sort of overlapping crises that we're working with as a species at different scales. The most kind of obvious and intense scale is the environmental scale, the ecological crisis. Um, and uh, as I was preparing for this Metadharma day long in San Francisco that, uh, that Michael and I, uh, Michael Taft and I co-facilitated, uh, I started to kind of do some more research and digging on the, on the meta crisis. You know, what is exactly this meta crisis? Um, and I found the World Economic Forum's Global Risks Report, which is a report that they put out every year looking at kind of global situation and the, and the main risks they see for humanity. And the 2019 report it was interesting just to kind of read through and scan over because the, the first and most obvious point was that um, five, the five most likely and most potentially impactful global risks were all in the environmental category and they were all related to climate change. So, and, and what's also interesting is that their risk report 10 years ago, no environmental uh, risks were in the top five most likely or most potentially impactful. So not only is the ecological crisis the most uh, the biggest potential risk, uh, according to this analysis, but also is the most recent uh, existential threat slash risk to emerge, and it's emerged very rapidly and is changing very rapidly. So that's kind of the, so some of the topography of the meta crisis, you know, of looking at what what it is we're trying to respond to in our practice. And um, in the second week, we continue to explore the uh, waking up process. You know, what does it mean to wake up? What does it mean to move through these different phases of insight to dissolve the ego? Uh, in the third week, we then turn toward the other part of this equation, waking up and then growing up. You know, what, is, what does it mean to actually expand the sense of self or to evolve, for egos to evolve? Um, to grow, to become more inclusive. And there we explored the sort of progression of egocentric to ethnocentric from I to we to world-centric to all of us to planet-centric to everyone, everything, and then to cosmocentric to, all, to the entire manifest, and you could say also the unmanifest uh, reality. Uh, and then today, um, what I'd like to do as a kind of way of closing up this exploration is to introduce this um, practice three minds are better than one it's a it's it's based in the big mind uh, practice tradition uh, from Genpo Roshi and Diane Musha Hamilton and um, the idea is to explore first the ego mind um, we start with the ego mind in this practice typically um, and because it relates to something that Dogen Zenji said. He said, you know, to study the self is to forget the self. To study the self is to forget the self. The only way to transcend the ego is to become extremely and exquisitely intimate with the ego. To, to really fully know what it's like. Um, because to know it, to, to, to be aware of it, means that we are no longer exclusively identified with it. Um, and so in this practice, instead of trying to transcend the ego right off the bat, which often for many people can bring up more ego, more ego mind, it's like, who is the one that's letting go of the ego? Who is the one that's transcending the ego? Uh, usually it's ego. <laughs> you know, usually it's a sense of sort of small selfness that is inherently uncomfortable with how things are. Uh, wants to get rid of that discomfort, let's call it awakening, because apparently with awakening, we're free, and then striving to <laughs> achieve that. Um, with this practice, we kind of flip that logic on his head, not seeing ego necessarily as a, um, as a problem to be transcended, but rather as something to become more aware of 
And so we inhabit the ego first, and consciously though, then this is the difference because normally we are inhabiting the ego. Uh, we're inhabiting our sort of egocentric selves. Uh, you know, I say a lot of us have spent a lot of time here, not everyone. Um, and in, in that we're often unaware, you know, unconscious uh, that that's happening. It's only we wake up from ego mind and go, whoa, shit, I was really caught in my shit. Here, instead, we're intentionally going into the ego mind and exploring what is it like as ego mind. So that's, again, it's a different logic. Um, and we're actually consciously entering into ego to see what it's like, to feel it, to experience it, to notice its characteristics, instead of just getting caught and lost in it and then waking up from it and going, oh, that sucks. Uh, we're going we're gonna to feel the suckiness, but just intentionally. <laughs> um, and then from there, we're going to switch in this practice to um, big mind. So, you know, with, it's kind of, you know, there's this sort of principle, you know, in nature. It's like, uh, I, guess, I guess it's probably one of the, the laws of thermodynamics. Um, you know, with every force, there's a counter force. So with every, every time we kind of go into something deeply, um, there can be a movement in the opposite direction. Um, and so this is also part of the kind of the logic of this practice is going into the ego and then slingshotting out of the ego into big mind to really notice the contrast between what it's like to inhabit these two different minds. And then finally in this practice, we're going to explore a uh, planetary mind, which is another word. It's a synonym for um, the planet centric self, which we explored last week. Um, the planetary mind, planet-centric self. These are kind of closely related concepts. And uh, the reason I wanted to kind of stop here, because in a way, planetary mind, it sits in an interesting position. It's, um, it has characteristics that are both part of the sort of egoic, you could say the egoic world, like it's part of the ego, it's an ego. Uh, at the same time, it's, it's a big ego. <laughs> you know, it's as big as the world. Uh, it's as big as the planet, maybe bigger. Um, so it's got qualities or, or characteristics also of the transpersonal space. It's to me, it's kind of like, I feel it like it's like a hybrid. Um, but the reason for uh, kind of ending the practice with the planetary mind, the intention there is to get in touch with something in our practice here that can serve as a bridge into exploring how we might respond to the meta crisis, and in particular, the ecological uh, dimension of it, because planetary mind and, pl and the planet centric self are a way of experiencing that transcend our human identity, uh, put us in touch with a sort of larger, the larger systems that we're embedded in, the ecologies that we're part of. Um, and I think it opens up a different field of information about, about the nature of the crisis and the nature of the life that we're trying to navigate here. Um, so my hope is that by doing that and exploring those different minds, we can uh, sort of you know, see what each of them are like, but then also have a kind of shared reference point for exploring and talking about metadharma um, from the perspective of the planetary mind. <laughs>